Shao Gan, we want to understand as human beings the most fundamental aspects of the world. The so-called theory of everything, the standard theory of particles, people talk about string theory explaining everything. You've had a unique approach. Uh, how does it work? Uh, normally, uh, when people try to understand something more deeply, people cut things into smaller parts. Right, reductionism. And, reductionism, and try to understand the smaller parts. When they want to get a further understanding, they cut things into even smaller parts. Right. This led us to the unmanned particles, like uh, electrons, quarks, photons, and etc. Right. So, if you want to understand even deeper, so should we cut photon, electron <laughs> into smaller parts? Like and strings. To, yeah, and <laughs> to see whether uh, where their property come from. Yes. But however, uh, there is a very different way to approach this problem, hmm. which we call the emergence approach, which is really an uh, approach people use very commonly in condensed matter uh, physics. Well, what is condensed matter physics? Uh, condensed matter physics is a branch of a science which studied the property of many, many particles, or many, many atoms, uh, like uh, in the liquid phase or in a crystal phase. Okay. And uh, one thing people studied is the following. You know, when the atom form a crystal, you know, we have a shape. Right. But if you disturb the crystal, then the disturbance may propagate and you have a wave in a crystal. Okay. And if you study, what is the wave? What is the property of the wave equation? How the dynamics of waves? Then, for a long time, people think about uh, uh, photons and electromagnetic waves. You know, 150 years ago, uh, Maxwell find that electromagnetism can be described by an uh, equation named after him, Maxwell equation. Right. And uh, so that's a particular kind of wave. So people always wonder if an electromagnetic field is a wave, if a light is a wave, what is waving? <laughs> what is waving? <laughs> and uh, people don't know. Even people don't know, people still believe there must be some media whose waving gave us Maxwell equation. Like the sound wave in the air yes. moves the air, yeah. and that wave moves the air. People thought that light had to move something in the same way. Exactly. Now this was before the end of the the, the ni 19th century and the 20th yes. century with Einstein and yeah. proving that light uh, is a constant. Yes. So so people always think there is a people want to believe there is a media whose a wave such a Maxwell equation, but people never find such a media. Never find it. However, in kind of, in condensed matter physics, people study all kind of material which have all kind of waves. Then the natural question comes, can we find a material such that the wave in it actually satisfies Maxwell equation? In that case, if you do find such material, then you can say, well, we have an artificial ether, and the wave is like artificial electromagnetic wave and artificial photon. And uh, so, uh, so there's a, a long quest uh, try to find some material like that. And uh, recently, uh, we find that uh, if a, a particle organized in the partic into a particular fashion, then the wave in it actually do satisfy Maxwell equation. So the way atom organized is falling. The first, the, the particles organized into uh, strings. Then the string can fluctuate, uh, move around, and form a liquid. So it's not ordinary liquid formed by point like a particle. It's kind of liquid formed by long strings. In the ordinary liquid, when atoms move around, we get a wave which are described by Euler equation, not Maxwell equation. But however, if you have a liquid of a strings, amazing, amazing thing happens. That the wave in a string liquid actually satisfy Maxwell equation. So this, this, this string liquid, now this is not string theory, because string theory has a lot of little loops and yes. things. This is like, uh, how would you describe this? Uh, uh, this these, these, these strings in the universe, your yeah. liquid strings. It's yeah. like so the space itself, like a noodle soup, 
So the string can be as large as the universe, can be as long as the universe. So the universe is like a noodle soup, with, yes. with the noodles being the string. strings. Yes. And the string can wiggle around. <laughs> and when those wiggling string form a wave, and that wave have an amazing property that is described by Maxwell equation. Which is the speed of light. Yes. And uh, so, uh, so one may wonder, you know, if you have a, a string liquid, which have a wave described by Maxwell equation, one may wonder, maybe our space is a string liquid, and we live in a noodle soup. <laughs> so, uh, so that is a kind of a possibility. So that's a kind of another way to understand photon. We try to say, maybe photon don't have a smaller part. Photon do not organize from a smaller part. But actually, photon originates from a particular organization of an underlying degree freedom, which form a space. And we identify such organization. That is, uh, if those degree freedom form a string, and the string form a liquid, then we will have a photon. So what you're saying is that the photons, the, 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 the enormity of what we see in li as light and all electromagnetic yeah. radiation, is just a perturbation or a wave function in this noodle soup yes. of our universe, and that noodle soup is the space. Yes. And this is the new kind of ether yes. that, that is different than the old kind of ether. Yeah. You know, for all the kind of ether, actually, we don't know what is all kind of ether, just a name, yeah, because right, we right, don't right, know right. what kind of organization, what kind of material, whose wave gave rise to Maxwell equation. Right. But now this noodle soup or this string that <laughs> liquid seems works. But even when, even if it works, one may wonder, maybe there's other way to understand origin of a light, origin of photon. It don't have to be a, this a string net picture. Mm. Actually, what makes me believe in string net picture is that the string net picture also explains the origin of an electron with no additional assumption. Mm. Because uh, if a string all from a closed loop, and when they wiggle, they get the light only, nothing else. Mm. But however, if some string have an open end, the open end string interact with a wiggling string, just like a charged particle interact with electric magnetic field. Mm. So this open end, just like a charged particle, just like electron. Mm. Furthermore, electron have a very strange property, which is called Fermi <laughs> statistics. So that the two electrons refuse to occupy the same space. This is very important in chemistry. Right. Otherwise, we Everything will only have one kind of elements. Right. It is because this uh, Fermi property, we have all kind of uh, atoms, uh, different kind of elements. And electrons this, in different shells, different uh, shells around the, uh, the nucleus. Yeah. Due to Pauli exclusion principle, they have to occupy different orbit. Right. So this is special so-called Fermi property. And uh, this Fermi property is reproduced by this uh, uh, string net liquid without additional assumption. So in a sense, trying to understand light in terms of a string net liquid, we not only understand light, we also understand origin of electrons. So it's kind of unified understanding of both light and electrons. So this makes me believe maybe we do live in a noodle soup. <laughs>